Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Gerbil, and in today's video, I don't want to talk about my main account, but rather my alt account, the Gerblit. So it's under 2 million GP. I started at about November, and ever since I unlocked Fleet Arena, I have been number one. And what that means is every day, with a few exceptions, I've earned 400 crystals a day. And if you can sustain that, it's 146,000 free crystals a year which is a lot of money if you were to just buy those in the store. How am I getting there? Honestly, I'm doing it with the Raven's Claw. The Raven's Claw has been really, really overlooked by most of the community because when it came out, it honestly was just a an insignificant replacement to the Hans Millennium Falcon, which was taken away from Home 1 and put with Profundity. But the reality is most people still don't have Profundity. And if you are early to early mid game, you absolutely don't have Profundity and you're probably still struggling to find your way in Fleet Arena. So this video is really dedicated to everybody who's kind of new starting out or wants to rethink and reimagine and focus on Home 1. Because to be honest, even in late game, I think the Raven's Claw is way, way better than its reputation. Stick with me, I'm gonna show you a bunch of videos and I'm gonna explain some strategy. It's kind of complicated, but I'm gonna lay it out as best I can. So here we go, first up, a vid. This is GAC in my Gerblit account. So why am I saying the Raven's Claw is actually so good? Well, first off, here we go. Notice Hans, Hans, Hans Tooth has got his taunt up, which is how he primarily functions. He's a wall that you can't bypass. And um, you know what? The Raven's Claw just says, I don't care. Um, Vader, die. Just like that. See, the Raven's Claw completely invalidates the Hound's Tooth. And almost every fleet in Fleet Arena is Hound's Tooth, early game, Hound's Tooth with Geos, Hound's Tooth with Empire, Hound's Tooth with whatever you want. And if the Raven's Claw walks in there and just says, I don't care about Taunt, then it's invalidating the top ship on the enemy fleet. I'm gonna explain more in detail, but I am consistently beating every fleet I go against, usually in 30 seconds to a minute. So let's start with a little bit of just evidence. Here is my past 30 day rankings, according to SWGOH.GG. The one day I didn't hit number one for the last month, I probably was just busy, who knows? I pretty much never, make more than one attack a day because I never drop out of the top five, which means that even on defense, the fleet is holding really, really well. You can see here's my fleet on the right, just underneath my, my picture. And yes, I have the Falcon, but you know what? I am not using it as a starter. That is another reason that I think most YouTubers and, and people online have overlooked it because everybody starts with the Falcon. And it makes sense, it is such an amazing ship. But it turns out, with the Raven's Claw, it is even more amazing if it's a reinforcement. So the next counter argument to it is, yeah, but if you're gonna go Rebels early game, you need all these crappy pilots. You know, like Jin, Pathfinder, K2, Biston, and it's like, you know what, that used to be true, but not since Admiral Raddus has come out. Because even at three or four stars, Admiral Raddus in GAC is a fantastic squad that hits way above its weight and has remarkable hold power, especially if you bite it and put the uh, Omicron on Admiral. He becomes amazing. Now, of course, you get Falk, uh, you get uh, Biggs, who doesn't really do much, but Kyle lends, you, lends to uh, Mon Mothma, which is also really, really solid in GAC and fantastic in Geonosian light side territory battles when you get there. I mean, if you, if you, with or without his Omicron, this is one of the most consistently winning squads in light side Geo. So you're going to help your guild out as well as helping your GAC uh, holding power. So it is not really true anymore that these pilots are not worth having. They're actually really good now. Times have changed. So here is Rise of the Empire, and I just filmed this one this morning on my main account. Watch this. Boo yeah. Did you see that? Did you see that? Rex was at full protection and almost full health, and we just we just destroyed him with a basic from the Raven's Claw. And then because I had just triggered my ultimate from home one, he took another turn. We did the AoE, which finished him off. So even in Rise of the Empire, the Raven's Claw, I, I run it as a reinforcement, but home one with Raven's Claw as my first reinforcement dominates 
the the first and second phase. I have not tested it in phase three and four yet, but it 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 is easy. It is easy. All right, so how does this work? Let's look at the kit. Okay, so the kit is rather complicated. It's got a lot of excessive wording. I'm going to try to just highlight the important details. The basic. It's it's basically Hounds Millennium Falcon. It will attack twice, double tap, if it starts to turn off with foresight. And it will. It will usually have foresight. Secondly, if you're attacking a target locked enemy, it will call another ally to assist, like the Falcon. Keep in mind that whenever an ally assists, then home one is going to give them bonus protection up. And whenever um, Biggs assists, he's going to apply taunt. And whenever he taunts, he recovers health protection. So this ship helps keep Biggs alive. Um, the second special, it's kind of nice. Um, it, it's an AoE, doesn't really do a lot of damage, but it cleanses all turn meter off the target enemy once you've upgraded it to 100% off turn meter. And it inflicts target lock, which of course triggers bonus protection or healing protection, whatever, on bigs. So you've got another target lock mechanic in here. And then you've got its first unique. There are two things here to really understand. First one, I mean, this is a unique. You don't have to worry about it. It's always there. All non-scoundrel rebel allies are going to gain 30% offense up. This is just straight on top of their kit. It's not dispellable. It's just always there. And that means Biston, who's already one of the hardest hitting ships in the game, becomes 30% more potent. And then Biggs, who doesn't really hit hard, but his special can, gets 30% more offense, including the Claw itself, 30% more offense, that's good. Also, the Raven's Claw, similar to Biggs, cannot be evaded. So early mid game, when you're running into Empire fleets and you've got, tar um, was it TIE Fighter out there who has a very, very high dodge rate, it's not going to dodge, which means you're not going to feed in a turn meter to Tarkin, which means you're going to kill Tarkin's fleet a lot faster. But the real magic is all up here on this guiding foresight. This is really complicated. So let me just summarize. You can read it and, and I've highlighted the key things, but here's the way it works. Whenever an enemy becomes target locked, it gains foresight. Whenever foresight expires, they gain uh, offense up. Whenever, <laughs> whenever a ship has foresight, it can bypass taunt. And if the Raven's Claw starts the turn with foresight, it will randomly inflict target lock on somebody. So you have kind of a, a, a loop here that someone triggers target lock, Raven's Claw gains foresight, starts a turn, it target locks somebody else, um, and it ignores taunt. And then whenever a non-scoundrel rebel, basically everyone but Outrider and the Falcon, whenever any other rebel attacks out of turn, assisting with another rebel, they gain foresight also, which of course spreads that around the whole team. And then when those foresights get dispelled, they gain offense up. So they gain 30% offense and then they gain offense up, which means they're gonna hit a lot harder. So here is a recent example. So we got Raven's Claw, Biggs, and Biston. Watch this, Biston says target lock. Biggs just as a basic, we got another target lock out there. We got a double tap from Raven's Claw. And at this point, normally you would be in a bit of trouble, but no, we're gonna AOE killing off Kylo Ren, who only got one turn. And uh, we get to dodge all of Tarkin's AOEs because the whole team had foresight. Now we're going to uh, strip off all that turn meter. We're going to double tap, kill <laughs> uh, Boba Fett. Now we call in the Falcon, which is going to call everyone to assist, and we win. Not only did everyone assist, when the Falcon comes in, it gives everyone foresight, which means everyone now bypasses taunt. And when those foresights dispel, if the battle goes, they all gain offense up. So here's your starting lineup. Raven's Claw, Biggs, Biston your reinforcements in order, Falcon, Cassian. You can go either way, it's kind of conditional, but Falcon, like I said, when it comes into play, it's gonna call everyone to assist, means everyone gains protection up from home one. Then uh, by it attacking and Biggs attacking, they're both gonna apply taunt, so it's two instances of taunt. Biston is gonna see both of those spread 35% turn meter out to, to two random people. Because you've triggered taunt, uh, the Raven's Claw gains foresight and a bunch of speed, then it's going to call an assist on its own because it's attacking with its basic. It, it's remarkable all the shenanigans that happen when you throw in the Raven's Claw with Biston and that Falcon comes onto the board. 
It just usually is the win. Oh, I hit the wrong way. So what does this mean? It means you can bench everyone else. So once you unlock Thrawn, just forget about Phoenix, just move on from there. Um, I haven't even touched the rest of these. I'm not going to for a while. I, eventually I'll go for Outrider as I work towards Profundity, but I'm a long way from there and I don't care. I'm 100% dominating. So here's how this works. Here's the actual turn order mechanic. So Biston has to go first. And yes, his base speed is, is low, but remember baked into his kit, he has bonus 25% speed. So that should be a priority when you're upgrading your fleet. You need to get Biston as fast as you can. I took Scarif and Biston up to gear 12, and that's pretty easy with the recent um, gear changes, right? It's actually really easy to farm those two characters straight up to gear 12. And at this gear 12 pilots, it's faster than anything I'm going to run into for a long, long, long time in fleet. So Biston goes first, says target lock, gains 30% turn meter off the get. Someone else gains 35% turn meter. Claw gains foresight. When Claw has foresight, it gains 50% speed. So likely Claw's going to go second. When Claw goes, you just basic whoever you put target lock on. And you want to target lock the attackers, the threats. Darth Vader, Kylo Ren, Geonosian Soldier, or Spy. Spy is going to go under stealth, so be careful. I generally go after Geonosian Soldier. So he's going to double tack since he had foresight. He's going to call an ally to assist. They're going to gain protection up and foresight. Um, he's going to dispel the buffs on the target if they had any. A random enemy is going to get target locked because he started the turn at foresight, which gives Big more protection if he had been damaged. Um, then Biggs is going to apply target lock on his basic if he attacks. A random ally is again going to get another 35% turn meter and like holy cow the shenanigans. However, if Biggs goes, if Big happened to get the bonus turn meter on turn one, then Biggs targeting the target locked enemy ship you use the special which guarantees an assist which guarantees foresight and protection up on that ship at some point your home one is going to get to take a turn when it does you get two things if biggs is in trouble heal him if he's just breached don't worry about it you used to need to clear breach you do not need to cleanse cleanse breach anymore it doesn't matter with the raven's claw just leave it there so if his health is fine um, just go ahead and do the AOE. Likely he'll be called to assist. If he's not called to assist, it doesn't matter. At some point he will attack and you'll get taunt up and he'll recover health and protection. But regardless, you're going to AOE. That means two ships attack out of turn, two ships gain foresight, <laughs> Biggs hopefully applies target lock, more per bonus protect, uh, turn meter on somebody. Now fast forward to the, the home one's second turn. You call in that Falcon and all allies gain foresight, which means they can all now bypass taunt. And all allies assist. That means everybody's going to attack and you typically just kill whatever you've targeted. If not, when the Falcon takes its first turn, it probably will kill them. So let's look at this against a, um, Thra a Tarkin team with the TIE Bomber, which is kind of the bane of rebels. And it is, it can go south. It can actually be a lot harder. But in my testing, I am not afraid of it still. So there we go, we target locked it, we got the double tap, um, we've got tenacity down, we've got offense down on it, we're gonna strip away all of its turn meter before it can go burn on us. And because we've stripped away all of its turn meter, we're gonna kill it. It lost its turn. The TIE Bomber is relatively slow. And because the Raven's Claw can pull off all of 100% uh, turn meter, you can generally do that to the bomber before it does the AOE applying burning on your fleet. And if you can do that, you, you pretty much win at this point. Especially if you have the Hans William Falcon, which I did not. At this point in this battle, my Raven's Claw is only five stars and I have no Hans Millennium Falcon. So I call in Cassian who removes all the enemy buffs and allows us to cleanse. But you can see the net effect is that we are just clearing the board here. Now we got a dodge on TIE Fighter, which sucks. That's okay. We, I probably should have targeted with uh, Raven's Claw right there. But I mean, look, we've 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 taken down Tie Bomber, Houndstooth, Slave One. Uh, we're going to now probably wipe out Vader. Here we go. Let's do a mass assist, which gives everyone foresight and protection up. 
And look at that. See, dodge because of the constant foresight spreading. Look at our health and protection. Look at that. Almost everybody's at full health protection. This is just crazy. All right, here's what it looks like against Geonosians. So let's let's drop some Geos. Geos can be a little bit harder because of their assists. They perpetually assist each other. Uh, can we start them? There we go. All right, so the same team, um, Biggs, Biston, Raven's Claw starting the battle. So what we're going to do is we're going to target lock Geonosian Soldier normally. We'll see if I follow my own... Uh, yep, Soldier. Now we're going to double tap him calling an assist. And we almost killed him. That's okay. We didn't get it. So we can't get past the tooth yet. So we just um, attack there. And now we're going to AoE or do we heal? See, this is the dilemma right here. I actually want to AoE with what I know to guarantee we kill the the soldier but it's actually safer to heal up which is why i probably chose that one so we heal up which gets rid of breach um that's okay that's fine and they're hitting hard see the geos assist so much makes it harder all right so we're gonna call in hans William falcon and just kill the tooth now that hans tooth is gone we're gonna lay into the geos and um that's it sun facts dead soldiers dead they're all dead we killed them all, just like Anakin. All right, folks, I hope this helps. Maybe gives you some uh, inspiration to take another look at the Raven's Claw. I'm not saying it's the best ship out there. I am saying early mid-game, it's probably the best ship out there. It, 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 with understanding the strategies and the turn orders, and it takes practice. But with some practice, you will easily dominate and likely hold top five in fleets until your uh, your fleet arena catches up and realizes, oh, it starts copying you or jumps into Negotiator. When you get to Negotiator, things change. So Negotiator is much harder. Um, it's, it's, I would not recommend the same lineup against Negotiator, but maybe I'll change that when my fleet shard gets there. So stay tuned. If you like this video, thank you. Give me a thumbs up and a, and a like. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you all later on the Hollow Tables. All right, bye-bye.